Salut, c'est Jean-Louis Janet à toute l'équipe de Décibel. Bienvenue à vous pour ce huitième numéro des Décibels l'été. Vous le savez, il s'agit bien sûr des meilleurs moments de l'émission. Avec ce soir au programme, Tupelo Soul, Roadrunners et Little Bob Story. Il s'agit bien sûr des groupes normands. Également au programme, les porte-manteaux. Sans oublier un nouveau groupe anglais, vidéo exclusive pour vous, Beloved. Ok, on débute cette émission avec un groupe qui vous a beaucoup plu. Je m'en souviens, on s'en souvient tous ici à l'émission. Il s'agit bien sûr des Killing Jokes. Punk, le terme rock gothique fut inventé, à défaut d'autre chose, pour des groupes comme Killing Joke. La blague qui tue ne supporte pas d'étiquette parfaitement inutile pour leur public. Killing Joke, c'est une façon de vivre. Voir les torches brandies dans les haies d'honneur à la sortie des premiers concerts, voir les rumeurs autour de l'exil de Jazz Coleman en Islande, ou encore la géomancie et le trip Apocalypse. Des exemples parmi d'autres de toute l'imagerie propre à Killing Joke au fil de leurs cinq albums. Et comme le sixième sortira dans dix jours, la bande de jazz Coleman, plutôt calme depuis un an, débarque chez vous. Entre Wardens et Adorations, il y a sept années de la fantasmagorie Killing Joke avec le son de plus en plus élaboré. Mm -hmm. It's changed all the music. Yeah. yeah. Where, where did you Surprising, find isn't it? Just one, one instrument. It's made just for him? No, no. This is uh, a, a that vintage that Gibson. This is from, what, 1958 or something? Something like that. 19? 58. Yeah. Something like that. Anyway, he could tell you more Gibson. about it. Uh, But uh, it's, it's like so warm. And it's uh, every, every time. He puts it into the amplifiers, it just speaks. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there are so many harmonies always, uh, always playing in the background. Um, we, we've, uh, what we've done is we've taken a year where well, we've all done basically what we want to do, you know, I mean, I went off to South America, Raven's been off, where have you been off Raven? Anyway, he went abroad somewhere. We've all gone out and done our own things basically, enjoyed ourselves, and then we've come back and we've written, and the music, the music is, has changed insofar as the formation of the sound, the arrangement, And the way we're the way we're writing at the moment. I mean, the fact is, you know, we've been going seven years, and now, at the end of that seven-year period, we're we're becoming very articulate musicians. You know, we know we know precisely what we want to hear. You know, and and uh, we're accomplishing it. You know, the sound you're hearing on Brighton and a Thousand Suns is what we always dreamed of. You know. We'll Thank you. 
give you a, a very brief explanation of this, right? Brides and a Thousand Sons is from Sanskrit literature, right? And uh, it basically talks of uh, fission or the splitting of the atom uh, in an ancient civilization. Of, uh, we estimate around 11, 12,000 years before Christ. Which means that if it is true, I mean, Dr. Robert Oppenheimer, the, the man who wrote, who, who um, who formulated the idea for the first atomic bomb. After he dropped, they dropped the, bo the, the Americans dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, um, Dr. Robert Oppenheimer started reading these verses that talk of nuclear war in prehistory. And it, it talks of an incandescent column of smoke and flame brighter than a thousand suns. Right. And he describes the nails falling out, you know, and the hair falling out and the teeth dropping out and all the water being infected and all this. Well, if it is true, it means that what we're approaching now, I mean, you've got the, the Reykjavik summit, the Iceland summit, which, <laughs> which uh, didn't, didn't go very well, you know. It, what it means is we're, what, what I think is going to happen in our lifetime, which is atomic warfare, it means it goes in cycles, which is quite an interesting idea to me and my friends. <laughs> yeah, but all of you practice an audience, we, we got that killing of fantasy very strong in the head. You know, it, it, that atmosphere that when we're playing, really, the exhilaration, I mean, when, you know, when killing joke, when it burns at a concert, it's, it, it's white hot, it's hotter than white hot, it, it's an incredible experience. It's true reality, you know? the, the, the audience that we have to do with relating back to that, you know, just the human contact between band and audience, you know, it's the only truth the we get The concerts have become it? a sanctuary for, for, for both band and audience, and the music, it represents a way of thinking, you know, a way of thinking that represents everything in our lives. Now, you can interpret that any way you like. Yeah. 
sore. 